Welcome to Pipeline Pulse, a special report on the landscape for search funds. A few years ago, I did a study on the state of search fund formations and the businesses that they acquired. We had the pandemic in the intervening years, so I was kind of curious to see what the data might show. I called over to my friends, Mark and Luke, and asked them for a spreadsheet, and they gladly sent it over to me. I'm going to share with you now what I found out. So I'm going to share the data from 2019, what I thought might have happened, and what actually happened. But first, I'm going to take a look at the landscape. We're going to see where we are today. First off, let's begin with an orientation on the global landscape for acquisition entrepreneurship. You'll see here a portrait that I recently took from Search Funder, and because a lot of folks ask me, where are their search funds? I'm beginning to actually answer. It might be easier to state which countries search funds are not in. Search funds started in the United States, and as you'll see from the numbers on the chart, uh, North America is by far dominant. It's just because North America got a head start on the rest of the world, but the rest of the world is working quite diligently to catch up. So first, we're going to turn to the uh, search fund formations. Now, as a reminder, a uh, search fund is essentially a vehicle by which entrepreneurs purchase companies. They're looking for a specific type of company. Uh, generally, it has uh, stable and profitable revenues, and low customer concentration, things like that. Let's uh, just get started with looking at where we were three years ago and what new data or information we might have on that. What is unfolding here are search fund formations through 2019. The green line here is the data that was pulled three years ago. That was the information that we had. The blue uh, line here is the latest pull of the data. Now, what you'll see is that the data kind of jumps in recent years, and that is to be expected. A search funder provides crowdsourced information. Sometimes there's a lag between when a search fund launches and then when it actually gets into the search funder database. Over time, that line uh, does smooth itself out. Here, you'll see that search fund formations basically started in the 80s, and you know there was just one or two or a handful of search funds launched. And then in 2000, it began to pick up, spe pick up steam. And then in 2010, uh, the growth began to become exponential. So the data showed that uh, previously that there had been a dip and then a resurgence. Uh, that dip, now that we've got more data available, more data in, shows that that dip was basically a leveling off and then a real surge in 2019 and the number of search forms search funds that were formed. Now say that one a couple of times really fast. Let's uh, go ahead and look at the data in a different way, same data, just want to look at it in a different way. So here we have the uh, launches by half year comparison. So the blue is the first half of a year, the purple is the second half, gray is the full year. And you can see that there is an overall trend up uh, until 2019. One of the things that I was thinking was that 
There was a lot of turmoil in 2020. We had MBA students who were adjusting to doing their schooling remotely. We had professionals who were getting used to having their kids at home and maybe working from home themselves or were trying to work at the office during the pandemic. So there was a lot going on in 2020 and a lot of uncertainty. So my expectation if I were a betting person was going to be that the number of formations for 2020 might equal or even have declined versus 2019. Now, I'm wondering if you're a betting person, would you take that bet or not? Let's uh, see what the results are. Wow. So here are the results for 2020. What you will see is that there is a substantial increase between 2019 and 2020 in the number of search funds formed. Uh, there was a substantial uptick in the first half of the year, and then that was vested in the second half of 2020. Uh, so it was impressive, the number of formations, that's a new peak. So the next question is, what about 2021? Would that trend hold? Now, in 2021, we were uh, much more accustomed to living uh, through the pandemic. Uh, there was a glimmer of hope that it would be ending soon and that we would be returning to a normal or at least a new uh, normal post-pandemic. So if I were a betting person, I might think that search funds would have increased substantially in 2021. I don't know. Let's take a look and see. So here is a slide that I've prepared that shows what I would have projected for a search fund formations for 2021. And this is projected data. Uh, I'm, I'm just guessing that it's just slightly higher uh, and it's just completely a projection on my part. So I'm gonna flip the slide now and see what happens. Oh no, um, search funds actually dropped. The number of search funds launched actually dropped in 2021. We see a substantial decrease. What we see is a, a decrease, particularly in the second half of 2021. Now I'm speculating that searchers who had already been in the pipeline, maybe they had started thinking about doing search in 2019 or 2018, um, were fairly committed to launching their search fund. And maybe what we're seeing in the second half of 2021 was that the pandemic did disrupt uh, searchers who were maybe on the fence or maybe hadn't yet considered it as a serious option. So those who had already invested the time and the energy to do the research and the homework and to get prepared, they got prepared and launched. Uh, others may have been delayed. So I will be curious to see what happens with the data for 2022. Because maybe that delay means that we're going to have a backlog of searchers launching uh, in the coming years. So let's see if we can glean something from the data that we do have available to us. So here we have the uh, 2022 data for the first half of the year. It's a little too early to say where the final numbers will land for 2022 because there is a lag in the reporting of the data. So this number could jump higher. It could be substantially higher or a little higher. We don't know. Uh, but 
the one thing we do know is that the first half of 2022 is on pace with pre-pandemic levels of search fund formation. So 2022 got off to a good start, certainly better than the first half of 2021. We'll just have to wait and see uh, and take a look at maybe in two or three months to see the data for the full year of 2022. So that is the launches of search funds through 2021 with a sneak peek at 2022. And I'm now showing you the full graph of through 2021. I'd love to hear what you have to say, whether you think my hunches were off and it was surprising to you or not surprising. Uh, please tell me your comments in the, in the box below or else uh, direct message me either on Search Fund or our LinkedIn. Now we are looking at the chart of acquisitions through 2019. Like the slide before, the green represents the data that was uh, pulled a few years ago. The uh, blue uh, represents the data that was pulled most recently. When we pulled the data three years ago, we weren't certain about where the data was going to land for 2019. Was the number of search funds the acquiring businesses going to be the same below or above 2018? And we understood that the data that we pulled was a little bit pre preliminary and we couldn't make any conclusions. I think now that we've had a few years of gathering data, we can fairly conclude that 2019 was slightly better than 2018. Uh, the question will be, does that represent a leveling off of search fund acquisitions in the pandemic or did something else happen? My guess would be that at best we would see a leveling off, but let's go ahead and look at the data. So here are the uh, acquisition numbers. There's a slight leveling off of businesses that were purchased in 2020. I think that that is pretty impressive given everything that happened that year uh, and all the change that was going on. But what about 2021? So let's first look at the 2020 data in a, a different way. And I'll tell you, uh, this is my projected uh, belief on 2021. I think that given the changes that were happening in 2020 and 2021, I would expect that search fund acquisitions would be slightly higher or about the same as 2020. It might get a little bit of an uptick. So let's reveal what actually happened in 2021. So that's my demarcation of where I think search fund acquisitions would would have landed if I were a betting person. And this is where it actually landed. Yes, indeed, we actually had a substantial increase in the number of businesses acquired in 2021. Uh, a lot of it happening in the second half of 2021, maybe as pandemic precautions were um, reduced or eliminated, maybe it was easier to go out to see business sellers, uh, perhaps uh, business owners 
be thought, look, I've been through 9-11, I've been through the Great Recession, I've been through the pandemic, it's time for somebody else to run my company, it's time for them to take on the legacy, I'm going to go visit all of the national parks, I'm going to you know, spend time with the grandkids or whatever it is that they were dreaming of doing while they were working on and in their businesses. Maybe they decided that 2021 was the year to do it. Another hypothesis is that some business owners uh, may have thought it was a good time to sell because of looming interest rate rises. So they felt like maybe it was a time to sell. Now let's look at the preliminary data for 2022. As you can see here, the first half of 2022 is in blue and the number of acquisitions trended up over 2021. Now that's about all that we can say right now. There, as I mentioned, is that lag. So I don't expect that number to go down but I don't know how far up it will go, if at all. We'll look again at pulling the data in a few months to see the, whether there's revised numbers for the first half of 2022, and also to look for the first time at the full year's numbers. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you've heard today and appreciate us bringing you the one minute news and special reports like this, please like or comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. That's the best way that you can help us help you. Thank you and have a good day.